Hi, I'm Jay. I'm Rich. I'm Josh. We're hacktivists and we're in inside the mosh. Mosh it. I'm Howard here from Inside the Marsh. I'm locked in a room above Club Yvjordbach with Hacktivist. Yeah, we're locked in for everyone's safety. How are you guys doing? Pretty hungover. Yeah, everyone's hungover here today. It's really crap. Everyone's all just like walking dead outside in the rain. And it's raining as well. Yeah, welcome to Wales. <laughs> Refreshing. Yeah. Refreshingly muggy and damp. Mm -hmm. That's Cardiff. Do you it's pretty that's the tagline when it's like, welcome Driving. to Wales, refreshingly damp. Damp and, yeah. I think, I, I, like, this... And then the translation in Wel Welsh underneath. Or is it Welsh first, then English? It's a very good point, actually. I think alternates, it depends. Like, at my, where I'm from, it's very, very Welsh-speaking. So a lot more of the stuff's just, just in Welsh a lot of the time. So it's quite cool. Struggles when you can't speak Welsh, though, like me. And I'm a bit like, I feel bad. I can't speak my own language. I don't know where to go. <laughs> Someone help me. But anyway, you guys looking forward to the show you're doing tonight? Yeah. Yeah, man, it's a good, good time to be playing. Always, yeah. Nice being back in. Probably for back as well. Yeah. This is third time we've been in, yeah. Yeah. Yeah? It's, how, when, was the when was the last time you guys were here? Like a while ago? We were here with Asteroid Boys a little while ago. Oh, yeah. I, think that, I feel like that was last year. Did on 100. I think yeah, I might have played here with the, one, with the 100 as well, though. Yeah, I remember I saw you guys with the 100 in Bristol yeah. for that one. Yeah. I feel like I've seen you guys like the most stupid man in the past two years. I must be like the most ultimate stalker, and I'm really That's sorry if you're getting sick of my face. But, yeah, it may as well. Um, how's everything been with you guys over the summer? I spoke to you guys first at the beginning of the summer at Slam Dunk, and now we're at the end of the summer. Have you had a good one? Uh, it's been a bit of quiet this summer, but all the shows we've played have been pretty big and uh, sick. But we've just been having uh, the time off we've had, just been writing music and stuff. While we're not playing as many shows and that this uh, this summer, we've just been making more music. So. Sounds good. Is it writing new music straight after releasing your album as well, which is. We didn't want to fall into the same same trap as last time, where maybe lifted a little bit long and it took a while so I mean learning learning from the errors and mistakes you might have made in the past to just kind of stay on top of it plus it's a lot of fun while we've actually yeah. got the time to do it what held us back a lot of the time was we were so busy whereas yeah. now having a bit of time trying to make most of it and getting all ready doing what we do best to bang us out getting some new writing and stuff done what's it like what's the reaction been like for you guys after finally releasing your album it must be great to A, be playing new music, hearing people's responses to it. It must be a great experience as a band to be able to do. Yeah, it was really nice to be noticed. Um, we were on tour... Who we on tour with? It was with um, Counting Days, wasn't it, when the album came yeah. out? Yeah. So when the album was released, was within two or three days of the album being released, we found those people singing lyrics to the songs that had just been released. Itself, which is obviously a really good sign, because it means that people have been yeah. listening to it liking it enough to listen to it a few times, picking up the words. I think that's the best kind of best kind of reaction you can really hope for. Yeah, definitely. Do you guys maybe a massive check, but in a metal scene, the best kind of reaction you can hope yeah. for. That's probably sadly very true. Just getting a check a reaction though. Oh, this is so good. Take my money. Reactionary check. <laughs> reactionary check. Just getting a huge check from a really like corrupt businessman going, oh, I like your work, well done, or or getting the crowds like signed with approval. He's putting on Spencer's letter though, isn't he? So, yeah. <laughs> probably, probably. Um, your guys' music is well, at least for me personally, and I know other people who I know who really, really like your music. You know, yes, you guys are amazingly heavy. You guys have great lyrics and stuff like that. But it's often the power and the anger and the emotion behind your lyrics and the way you play. And you guys are as a band, you guys never shy away from, you know, saying what you feel about what's going on in the world at the moment. Is that something that's a conscious decision when you're writing music, or is it just a way that you guys kind of vent how you're feeling about everything in the world at the moment? Bit of both, really, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess it's um, not trying to filter what we're saying too much, I'm trying to make it socially acceptable or 
nicely packaged, I guess. It's just kind of what comes out organically from Ben and Jay's minds most of the time. Yeah, yeah. I just write, write about stuff that I'm seeing and what I'm going through, so, yeah. Topics need to be covered, though, as well. And it's always important to make sure that you have a certain level of content with your the things that you're putting out, otherwise it just sort of falls by the wayside. It doesn't really add anything. I'm gonna try and in kind of respect as well, we're in a kind of privileged position where people are starting to be interested in what it is we're saying. So it's nice to use that opportunity to kind of get our get our opinions and thoughts out. Yeah, it must be quite fun being able to I, it must be quite powerful as a musician as well and an artist, I guess, to be able to write these lyrics that mean a lot to you and to get into a really like you guys play very like close intimate gigs where like literally the like the crowd is like right there, right next to you. It must be quite a powerful experience to share your music with people who are like yelling it and angry with you right back as well. Yeah, right. There's passion from both sides, from the band and from the crowd. It's wicked getting 500 kids giving the middle finger to David Cameron every night. That's yeah, a dream come true. I love wearing your shirt at work because people are like, oh yeah, you watch activists and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, really like them. Turn around and they're like, oh okay, <laughs> which always goes down quite well. Yeah, exactly. Um, your guys' latest, well, one of your videos um, for Hate, which is personally my favourite song off the album. Which I absolutely. I, 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 it's just amazing. It's like listening through the album and listening to that one, it's like, oh my god. Like, on repeat. The video for it is probably one of the best videos I've ever seen for a song. Just, it cracks me up and is like, but powerful at the same time. Because it shows the whole duality that you guys have to go through as a band, like, go from your day jobs to this, to back again. Like, what's that like? Because it must be quite difficult having to change from one thing to another. Um, it's, um, I quite enjoy it at the moment, to be fair. Yeah? Because when I'm at work, I've always got something to look forward to, like another gig to play, so it gets me through. Um, so yeah, plus have, having money is pretty needed as well. <laughs> uh, I can imagine. Uh, pretty hungry these days. <laughs> yeah. Nice to stay fed. Yeah. Although sandwiches are sandwiches are gigs, yeah. yeah. Yeah, do you guys get fed at gigs and stuff? Is that a yeah, thing? Very well, yeah. That's if you good. like sandwiches, it's a great place <laughs> yeah, to get into. You can have it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, yeah. All and then even a little sandwich. dessert. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, wrapped up. Yeah. I've got to ask then, what is the ultimate sandwich? Because I'm a huge lover of sandwiches. Tuna and cheese, isn't it? I've never heard of tuna That's and cheese. Good. Really? Tuna and cheese salad. Tuna and cheese and milk. Yeah. That's a good. One. Onion, bit garlic. If you put it like or in a pit of bread pocket, jam. Ooh, just like, the it? classic oh. peanut butter and jam. Peanut butter and jam. Mm. PBJ, just the classic. Yeah. I'm maybe pushing a bit out too far, but I'm a big fan of halloumi and sun dried tomato. <laughs> Fucking hell, that's posh. <laughs> you get that again. If you're gonna live on sandwiches, then you may as well. That's eat very that. true. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, that's very true. Fair enough. I'm gonna have to w ask a very weird question now. If hacktivist was to be a sandwich, what type of sandwich would you be? Meat. Just, just meat. Just just like it would be off right. Off it meat. Would be, it wouldn't be right because Ben's vegan. Yeah. And Josh is kind of getting there as well. But uh, um, I don't know. Right. Definitely cheese. Meat. It's it's that's vegan. my main it's problem as well. So cheese. Off, like. off fish. Okay. But like one of the bottom sea dwellers. Has anyone ever had a sugar sandwich? Oh uh, yeah. Sugar sandwich. Yeah. Sugar sandwich, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just sweet as fuck. Growing up poor. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> over, over the summer, me and my partner have just been living off jam sandwiches. Yeah. Like 70 pence jam yeah. sandwich. Nice. You've got to do it, haven't you, one day? Just live off sandwiches. Eat it outside and have a picnic. Yeah, outside for me is just a street, so it's kind of a bit. Street picnic. <laughs> street picnic. I suppose that could be done. We could do it out here in the rain. So, what do we settle yeah. on sandwich wise? I'm hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a sugar sandwich because Hackers is just sweet as fuck. That is adorable, I'm not gonna lie. Well, I'm what about like two classic great combinations jammed into like some kind of double decker situation? Ooh, or like so a like, club. Yeah, so like a chicken and bacon, Surf and but then completely other fucking end of it. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> And Actually, I can say what the worst combination was. My oh. mate ended up panic ordering at, um, at the bar a ham toasty, and he, he had like an extra addition, which 
he got like presented with what do you want and he sort of panicked and got bacon <laughs> cheese so you got ham, ham and bacon ham and oh my god not even with like cheese so you've got like a panini just with ham and bacon <laughs> that must have been really salty and really dry stick some magic, that's really rough <laughs> just double pork sandwich like yeah I'm glad I said pork. I was like, don't say the wrong kind of meat then. I was like, if so, like that would have been bad. What does the rest of away from sandwiches? Um, I'm eating probably quite soon. So I'm really hungry now. Um, what do you guys have planned for the rest of the year? Well, we're playing Reading and Leeds next week. Yeah, what's uh, it going to be like? Because the first time I ever saw you guys was at Reading and Leeds in 2014. Nice, uh, at the nice. Reading one. In Reading, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is mental. Yeah. Um, What's it like going back as a band to the same venue, especially like a festival or something big like that, like a couple of the years down the line, playing new music and stuff, what's it like? It's cool to be asked to come back, you know, it means that you're still, you're still smashing it basically and you've still got people out there that want to hear, man, so it's really, really, really good. Um, plus festivals are just sick anyway, so... Yeah, Redmond Leeds is always one of the nice ones, if they want you, you always want to be like yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this one's going to be a nice setup for us because, like I said, the main stage, incredible life experience, big life goal ticked off. Yeah. But I mean, for hacktivists, I don't know if necessarily playing a massive field is the best way to get hacktivists to you. Whereas mm. we're on the tent this time, yeah. later on in the evening, yeah. have a couple more drinks, mm. Mm. a bit more sweat in your face. It's a bit more like a club show kind of. But I, I think for us, tent is going to be a real good one going to be a lot of energy yeah and then we played played Redden and Leeds the year before that in fact mm. um, in one of the tents and that was an incredible show download as well that year so yeah I'm, I'm expecting, expecting good things this year that's me mental I wish I was going now <laughs> I'm working ne- maybe next year you guys will be back again mm. it's like weird because I think like people like Frank Carter has been there for like 10 years in a row I feel like Reading and Leeds is one of those bands wow. that just keeps bringing people back so it's like nice that you guys are becoming sure, regulars there. Yeah. Hey mate, we can do 10 in a row, why not? <laughs> yeah. Why not? I mean, I'd be oh, down with that. Pairs up front. <laughs> yeah, pairs <laughs> in advance, sweet. 10 year contract, play yeah. at Reading and Leeds. There as well, sounds good. With the um, like new music and stuff, like obviously, like you keep writing stuff, do you guys prefer to write on tour or when you're like at home? I prefer to get? write at home. How come? Me, personally. Just because I've got, I'm in my nice surroundings. And uh, yeah, it's just it's, it, um, when you're on tour, you've got to, it's like um, you're always moving along, you know, you get somewhere, you pack your stuff down, chill out for a bit, you have your interviews, you have your uh, dinner, and then you have your sound check, and then you play a gig, and then you're drunk, and then you wake up in a hotel, and then you go from that hotel, and you're traveling again. You don't get too much time to chill out and not do much. Um, and when I'm writing, I need like four hours, like. Of just nothing from us, so I definitely prefer writing at home. But I do write on tour as well because things just pop into my head sometimes. But um, I write anywhere, anyway, like not just anywhere. Like, um, yeah, because when I'm on tour, I'll just little things will come into my head and I'll write down. But it's the same when I'm at work, little things will come into my head and I'm writing down. But then I'll take, I'll go into my room and then spend four hours putting all these things that I've written down together. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Basically, like to ha- everything comes from everywhere, but you really need that space to be able to lock yourself away and then yeah, just. I do prefer writing at home, definitely. Fair enough. Sounds awesome. Thank you guys so much for speaking to me.